What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I wanted to, to finally do a review of what I consider the ultimate electronic system. Uh, you know, for the last few years I've been working with BassBoatElectronics.com and they really just kick it in the high gear with, with my boat every single year. It's just a phenomenal system. And so I wanted to go through my entire electronic system, including my, my troll motor on the bow. So we're gonna get started on that. And uh, first off, this is the boat. This is the, the Nitro Z21, my 2021 uh, model. And paired with all the electronics, all the different features we've got on it, it's pretty spectacular. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start on the bow. This is, you know, this is kind of where where you know you you catch all your fish, obviously. So this is a really important part of my electronic system. Uh, before we get started on it, uh, just just please consider you know subscribing to my channel. Uh, and if you have any questions, of course, comment below. So if you like this video, just just hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that like button too. I appreciate it. Uh, but let's get started on the bow. So. <clears throat> My essentially what our our goal is with our electronics is to get the big picture as well as the the small picture, you know, in, in dialing everything in. And so that's why we're using all three different brands of electronics. We got a Garmin 1022 up here that is running our our Panoptics Live Scope. We got a Humminbird Gen 3 12 inch Helix unit or Solix unit rather. And uh, that is strictly running my, my uh, 360. We got Mega 360. However, we're, we're using it in a uh, uh, 420 to 520 uh, kilohertz uh, frequency um, because we're obviously we're using other high frequency uh, signals. So they're kind of getting a little bit of a disruption. But on the lower frequencies, you don't have any of those issues. And then of course, we've got the HDS Live 12 and that is running mostly my, my Navionics mapping as well as 2D sonar. And uh, so those are the units that I've got up here. You can see with all of those units, including the HydroWave, I've got a lot of different uh, transducers and, and things going on here on the, the Motor Guide Tour Pro. And that's the other thing. On, on the bow, we've got the Motor Guide Tour Pro. It's a neutral motor. It's a, it's a, a really, really cool tro troll motor. It's GPS enabled. It's got pinpoint GPS. Uh, and it's still a cable steer that has a power assist steering. So it's, it's, it's still true cable steer, but it's power assist. Now, the reason why we've got this set up with all these different types of brands is obviously, you know, as a professional fisherman, I, I have to utilize as many tools as I can to help me, you know, be able to accomplish the job, which is cash and checks. And, uh, and each one of these brands brings something to the table that the others do not have. Uh, for instance, um, what we were talking about earlier, having getting the big picture as well as the fine-tuned picture, the, the small picture, um, with the, the 360, the 360 really complements the new forward-looking sonar, like the Panoptics Live Scope. Um, the 360 gives me a really good broad picture. I can see all the stumps, I can see hard spots, uh, I can follow grass lines. Uh, I can find things as I'm moving along that I don't see on any of the other units. So the 360 really it has been, become a really big part of, of what I do. That being said, the Panoptics Live Scope is just incredible. I mean, everybody's talking about forward-looking sonar nowadays, and uh, forward-looking sonar is just one of those tools that has revolutionized the sport. And so when I'm, I see something on the 360, I can then go to my Panoptics Live Scope, fine tune things. I can actually find the fish, see their movements, even see how uh, their body movements are, you know. Uh, I can see the mood of the fish even, and, and I can also line up the cast. The, the Panoptics Live Scope is really good for, for finding like say a brush pile. You'll see it on the 360, but lining it up is much easier and more precise with the Panoptics Live Scope. So using these two sonar technologies has, has been huge. But that being said, you know, the old technology, the 2D sonar that I've got right here on the, uh, the Lowrance that is actually built into the, uh, the universal sonar on my, my uh, uh, Motor Guide Tour Pro, that is still something I use a lot especially vertical fishing and also just getting a, a real quick snapshot of what's below the boat. That's really important. And then uh, as far as the mapping goes, 
obviously mapping's really important. The Lowrance, as you'll see, that I also have a Lowrance on the console, which we'll get to soon. Um, and the Lowrance units are kind of the core of my electronic system. Uh, they manage all my waypoints and tracks. That's I'm going to be doing most of my work um, when it comes to finding fish and, and managing waypoints with the, uh, the Lowrance. Um, and uh, you can see my Navionics maps here. One thing I started doing this year that I really, really like um, that allows me to not have to, to go down and zoom out constantly on the maps is I actually have a screen that I, I have for zoomed in mapping right here, the big ones for zoomed in mapping. And then I've got a smaller screen right here um, that allows me to zoom out. So I keep that one zoomed out so I can see uh, you know what the next point looks like, what, what, if there's another like pocket in the back of a creek or something like that. And so that's really important. Um, but overall, everything on the bow works extremely well together, and the whole goal is to not have to mess around with these units too much. You know, the Humminbird is strictly 360, uh, the, the Garmin is strictly Panoptics Live Scope, and then the Lowrance is all these different features right here, mapping and 2D sonar. All right, so here we're at the console. A couple things that I forgot to mention on the bow. Um, we've actually, the, the initial setup that we had from BassBoatElectronics.com was to have the new active target from Lowrance on the on the the troll motor too, so we had that in their in their uh, uh, scout mode, and uh, and you know it it all worked together actually pretty well, which is which was kind of weird, but it ended up um, blocking the 360 a little bit and creating a little bit of a shadow. So uh, that's one thing I didn't mention up there is that we did try having all three of those different types of technology up there, and it worked. Um, and it didn't have too much interference with each other, but it still wasn't like optimized. So we ended up taking the active target off, um, but I look forward to, to testing it a little bit. We're still gonna keep it so I can use it as a, you know, either a backup or, or you know, switch out from the pan optics to the active target. But, all right, so here we go. We got the console. Uh, obviously this is uh, when I'm, you know, searching out fish and breaking down a lake this is the this is the the place right here we're inside so it's not getting a gps signal but um the the reason why we have so many units you know that you see so many guys now going to multiple brands or or having you know upwards of five units i've even seen some guys with six i've got five units which is plenty plenty uh for me um and uh, the reason for that is Efficiency, you know, time is money. That's the old saying. Uh, and, and efficiency is just so absolutely critical in, in fishing. Again, we're, we're, our goal with electronics is to try to get the, what I call the macro picture and also the micro picture. So get the big picture, you know, fine structure, maybe fine fish uh, that, that is in a wide area very quick and then fine tune it. So we've got these two units. We've got the Humminbird uh, Gen 3 Solix um, 12 inch, and then also the Lowrance HGS Live 12. Um, both of them have uh, the, the respective uh, side imaging or, or structure scan transducers on the back. So I'm actually, I've got mega imaging on this one, um, and I've got the, uh, uh, I think it's the active imaging transducer on this one. Uh, or the three-in-one. So we're utilizing side scan or, or side imaging technology on both of these these units. The difference is that on the, the Humminbird, I'm a little bit more zoomed in. You know, that, that high frequency mega imaging does really good in a short distances, like, you know, say 50, 60, 70 feet, um, but it tends to teeter out around that 100 foot range sometimes. And so I use it, it zoomed in a little bit more, usually around that 50 or 60 um, uh, distance on both sides. And then on the Lowrance, I end up doing a little bit wider. So I get a wider picture. I use it in a 455 kilohertz that allows me to get a very broad distance. You know, if I'm trying to find brush piles uh, and, and cover the most water possible, I can find them further away with the Lowrance, but then fine tune, you know, what's around them with the, with the Humminbird. And uh, we kind of do the exact opposite when it comes to mapping on these two. So the, the Humminbird is kind of my zoomed out screen. So I, I tend to, to stay zoomed out. It's one of the ones that I use. Uh, I look at this one the most when I'm, I'm in transit between spots um, and trying to get a broad picture of the lake. And then on the Lowrance, 
this little screen right here, which these are the two screens that I'm pretty much on all the time, uh, except for when I'm running. Sometimes I've got a preset right here that allows me to go to just map and 2D sonar because we do have a through through hole uh, sonar transducer um, in the in the bilge so I can still read bottom while I'm running. Um, but so I switch between those two, but for the most part, I'm staying with these two screens. Uh, you can see the map, my Navionics map zoomed in a lot further so I can see the little details in the, in the topography. And then we've got down scan, which is really important for finding fish. Uh, side scan is really good for finding structure uh, and, and possible fish locations. Uh, but, but down scan is really good. Once you find an area that looks really good, you can drive over it with down scan and really see if there's fish schooled up there or not. So down scan is really good for finding fish and to kind of uh, get a high resolution picture of what's down there right below the boat. And of course we still have 2D sonar. 2D sonar is not outdated. Uh, it's really, really good for getting a real quick snapshot, you know, just that, that real bold picture of what's right below the boat, um, which is really important because sometimes the, the high uh, target separation that, that these other types of technology, side scan and down scan, sometimes you, you might miss something. But on 2D, it shows up as a big blob. It shows up really bright. And then I know that there's something there and I can look back on my down scan. So that's the reason why I've got this set up here uh, on the, on the, uh, the console. Uh, another thing that I need to mention, because uh, I forgot about it on the bow too, is the fact that we've got Battleborn lithium batteries that are running the trolling motor system. Um, and all I can say about those is, so far they've been absolutely bulletproof. Uh, I have not ever run them down and I've gone several days without charging them. Uh, and, uh, and because we've got a, a five battery system in here, it's really important to be able to manage those. And one thing that's really cool is the power pole charge system. So this charge system does a really good job at keeping all of the battery levels perfectly uh, you know, charged. I haven't had any issues with, with um, problems cranking the engine, which is a, a big issue when you're running all five different units and you've got these different, you know, like live scope modules and things like that, the block boxes that are, are, are working. So there's a lot of power being used and uh, the charge system is really cool. I can, you know, put it on the, the Lowrance, obviously. I keep it on that so I can monitor everything, but I also put it on my, my um, iPhone. So that is, that is the, uh, the setup here at the console. And that's pretty much the system that I have. The only th other thing I need to point out is I've got the uh, Lowrance .1 uh, GPS module, uh, which is a really important part of this entire system when I'm on the bow, especially because it gives you directional heading. So wherever the bow is pointed, that's where that, that heading uh, line that I have, the heading extension on the, on the bow. So I can line up with a, a specific waypoint, sp a specific point, whatever it may be, um, very easily. You know, the last thing you want is that that course line to just kind of be dancing all over the place because you're sitting kind of still. So that point one uh, puck does a, a a tremendous job at lining me up with everything, along with of course the Panoptics live scope. But man, it's a mouthful. There's a lot going on here. But this is what I I would have to consider the ultimate Bass Boat Electronics setup. And it's all because of BassBoatElectronics.com. They've really, uh, you know, done a great job with this. We're gonna do a video all about the wiring and the power system here. So the batteries and how we wire it uh, to make everything work perfectly. But um, uh, Jason at BBE is just amazing. And uh, so this is my setup. Of course, you know, everybody's personal preferences play a big role in how you set this up and what units you use. But for me, this is the ultimate electronic system. So thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to see you guys out in the water. And if you if you have any questions out of the water, you'll, you'll see this big Bass Boat Electronics boat out there. Stop and say hi and ask any questions you want. And of course, you got the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you on the water.